Assalamu alaikum dear students. I warmly welcome all of you to Allama Iqbal Open University Studio. Today's program focuses on present perfect tense and I hope you will enjoy this segment. This idea too has been taken from the course book that has already been provided to you by the university. This tense may be said to be a sort of mixture of present and past. It always implies a strong connection with the present and is chiefly used in conversation, letters, newspapers, and television and radio reports. From today onwards, if you observe how people use this tense, I believe you will learn it faster and for long time. While watching television programs, you will see that people use uh, this tense quite frequently. Watching a news, for example, BBC, CNN, or some Pakistani televisions too, you will see that this tense is quite commonly used in conversation and news. Uh, remember, we often do the form and function both the things and today, once again, we'll start with the form first. And when we discuss form, first thing that comes to the mind is the positive or affirmative sentences. So the formula is, first of all, you will use subject and that will be followed by have or has. And I believe you remember, have is used with plural verbs or with I, you, we like this and has is used with third person singular and remember since it is perfect tense you will use the third form of the verb neither first nor second and then use object if required because in sometimes some some sentences we don't use any object for example if I say he has uh, slept no I, no need to use any object here now look at these sentences <coughs> on the screen in front of you Sami has written a letter now, if you focus on um, the sentence, you will see has, has been used because Sami is a singular person. And then you have got written, there is a third form of write because has and have demand the third form. And a letter in English, whenever you use a countable noun, we use a or an or number. So letter is countable, we're you're saying a letter. Second example is you have plucked a flower. I have boiled an egg and you can see in, in second and third examples I have used have because uh, in the subject place we have used you and I respectively and the last example for this uh, formula is she has posted the letter but remember you must be very careful in pronouncing the third forms of different verbs in English these regular verbs can have three different forms for example if you look at these sentences plucked P L U C K E D. Here, E D in spelling will change into t, t, t sound, t for toy, and it is plucked, not plucked. If you say plucked, that is wrong, and uh, you will feel that it is it is harder to pronounce plucked than plucked. Plucked is easy. Now, the second example, the word is B O I L E D, boiled. It remains D, d boiled. You won't say boiled. And the third is posted. Remember the formula. If uh, the base form of a verb, regular English verb, ends with T or D, that ED will change into ID. But if the base form ends with K, S, SH, CH, a few more sounds, then ED will change into T. For example, match, matched, smash, smashed, and lock, locked, stop, stopped. This will help you in uh, speech. Uh, now we'll move to the second aspect of the form, that is negative construction. You know, it is very easy. Simply, you've got the subject and then you've got have or has. What you're supposed to add is not. 
and then verb is already there in the third form and then object as I said if required I haven't changed the sentences because I think instead of putting you in trouble I should keep the same sentences there so that you learn the tenses uh, in the better way uh, the same sentence has been changed into negative for example Sami has written a letter will become Sami has not written a letter many people uh, might confuse the use of not they don't have any idea as to where to use this not after has or after written uh, because when there is a, a group of verbs being used together what they call verbal group people often commit this mistake remember the tip uh, not is used after the first verb whether it is helping verb or the main verb usually when there are two verbs first is helping the second is main so not is used between them now look at the example Sami has not written a letter second example you have not plucked a flower and the third is I have not boiled an egg she has not posted the letter I believe you're getting the point we'll move to what they call interrogative or or question forms interrogative or uh, question forms quite easy just remember the helping verb will be shifted to the beginning before the main verb and the rest will remain same example number one has Sami written a letter don't forget to put the question mark if you don't put a question mark in your examination your sentence will be considered wrong you will not get any mark second example have you plucked a flower have you eaten the eggs and the last is has he posted the letter uh, one more thing that you must keep in mind while speaking that your tone must be going up for question forms because when you are making a question you're making an inquiry for that your tone must be rising tone not the following one or not not nor flat one second important aspect of this tense is like other tenses function we'll move to the function now because function I think is as important as a form or sometimes maybe the function is more important because sometimes even if you don't use the form but the function is already there that is something living that must be used properly first function we use the present perfect tense to indicate completed activities in the immediate past immediate past means that is recent past for example, Junaid has just finished his tea. We are not talking about finishing tea maybe one year ago or one month ago, just maybe two minutes ago, one minute ago. That is recent past. Second example is, I have just met my father. Again, that is called immediate past or recent past. Second function is that we can also use this tense to talk about past actions whose time is not given and not definite for example have you read Hamlet here I'm not concerned with the time I'm concerned with your reading of the play called Hamlet and the second example is I have been to Japan once again I'm not concerned with time here or maybe I think time is not important or I think time should not be used here it doesn't suit last example Shweb has done masters in English when no idea when we don't want to discuss we're not concerned with similarly the present perfect tense is used to describe past events when we think more of their effect in the present than of the action itself and this is something very interesting I'll give you some examples and uh, I hope you will not forget this tense example number one is you have eaten my lunch now what is the effect you know something happened in the past effect is still there when I say you have eaten my lunch it means I am both angry and hungry second example Ahmed has cut his finger can you guess the effect the effect is that he is still feeling the pain one more example I have finished my work and the effect you can you can feel effect is that I am free as a bird I can go anywhere I like we also use the present perfect tense to denote an action beginning at some point in the past 
and continuing up to the present moment. For example, I have known Jafar for a long time. Now, for this thing, in Urdu, for example, you can say, Main se bhot arse se janta hoon. Here, if you say, uh, like, I have been knowing, or like this, that would be wrong. The only possibility here is, I have known, present perfect tense. I have known Jafar for a long time, and it also shows that you will keep on knowing him or having some relations with him uh, in future as well. Continu uh, continuity affection. Second example, the old man has lived in this house all his life. What does it mean? Can you guess? It means, although he has lived in this house for all his life, he will continue to do so. I haven't seen Asif for several months and no idea when I'm going to meet him again. One more function is that it can also be used for actions which occur in the past and that action could be repeated in the present. For example, I've watched BBC many a time. What does it mean? You know, it means uh, maybe I like BBC or I think uh, it is a part of my job. I watch it quite often and I will keep on watching it in future as well. If the Ghar Arif has written many beautiful poems, now compare this sentence with Iqbal wrote many beautiful poems. Here I cannot say Iqbal has written many beautiful poems. If I say Iqbal has written many beautiful poems, it simply means Allama Muhammad Iqbal is still alive, but he is not. But comparing with this first sentence, if the Khar Arif has written many beautiful poems, uh, it tells us that he is still alive. It means when we talk about somebody who is dead, who is no more alive, we used uh, we use past uh, simple, uh, second form of the verb. Iqbal wrote many beautiful poems. Or I can say, Qaid uh, Muhammad Rijana delivered many speeches to Muslim League. I cannot say has delivered. If I say has delivered, it simply means he's alive and he will keep on delivering more speeches until he is alive. Now, I'll repeat these sentences. If the Khar Arif has written many beautiful poems, because he is alive, has written, and Iqbal wrote many beautiful poems, wrote simple past, because he is not alive. This tense uh, can also be used for uh, actions occurring in an incomplete period, and this incomplete period may be indicated by today or this morning, afternoon, this evening, this week, month, year, century, etc. But note that this tense can be used with, for example, this morning only up to about, let's say, 11 o'clock, because after that, this morning becomes a completed period and actions occurring in it must be put into simple past. Example, I have seen Khalid this morning, but I saw Khalid, Khalid this morning. It's something very interesting. You know, first, I have seen Khalid this morning simply means so you're talking, uh, when you're talking, still it is the morning time. And when you say, I saw Khalid this morning, it means uh, you, saw, you saw him in the morning, but now it might be noon, evening, or at night. It means when you talk about an, uh, an action and you talk about time that is still continuing, we use pr present perfect tense. One example, one more example. Pakistan has suffered uh, Pakistan has seen many suicide attacks this year and the people still worry about more attacks. They are expecting more, um, more attacks like, like the previous ones. But if I say, uh, in future for example, if I say uh, there is peace in the country and we hope for the peace and uh, let's say 2012, somebody says, we saw many, we suffered from many casualties, we saw many suicide attacks in the country. If peace has prevailed that time, means the tense will be used that is simple past, not present perfect. If I say, I have seen my friend in the evening, means still it is evening time, not night. And if I say, I have seen my father at noon, still it is noon time. It's important, remember. We also use this tense 
for habitual actions. For example, Kashif has always helped me in trouble. I'm talking about a quality that Kashif has. What is that? He has always helped me in trouble. I have never been late for work shows my punctuality. I have never been. Sometimes these appear to be continual rather than repeated actions. Uh, for example, since my accident, I have written with my left hand. I've worn glasses since my childhood. Or I've used my left hand for a month now. And I've worn glasses for 10 years now, sort of continuity. The present perfect is also used for an action that lasts throughout an incomplete period. Here we can use the time expressions like since, for, all day, all night, all week, uh, all my life, etc. All the time, always, lately, never, recently. I mean, there are so many words which can be used in uh, this situation. This action usually begins in the past and continues past the time of speaking in the present. It means something started in the past, continued for some time, continuing in uh, the present time, and may enter future. For example, he has been in the army for two years, and he's still in the army, and he will continue that job. I have smoked since I left school, and I still smoke, but remember, Smoking is something bad. It is injurious to health, right? Not injurious for health. We have waited all day and we are still waiting. We have waited all day means we started this action in the past, still going on, and we don't have any idea how long we'll be waiting for the person. Or maybe it has just finished when the person has come. He has lived here all his life and he still lives here. One more example, he has always worked for us, and he still works for us, always worked. Remember uh, what I told you in the beginning, worked will not be pronounced with ed, that is worked. It will be worked because when the bass form ends with ka sound, ed will change into t. It will not be pronounced like d, worked, because that becomes correct as well as easier to pronounce. A uh, present perfect tense is uh, not used when the past time is already mentioned. Can you guess what tense can we use then? Right. In such situations, we use a simple past tense. I'll give you two sentences, and uh, I'll simply uh, expect from you people to make more sentences like these, like this, this pair. This mine, mine one is, Asad has bought this pen yesterday. This is wrong, you know. Why? When time has been mentioned, and the time here men time mentioned here is yesterday, we cannot use present perfect tense. Sentence is, Asad has bought this pen yesterday, should be changed into simple past tense because of the time factor. So the sentence will be, Asad bought this pen yesterday. This is the right sentence. Can you try more? Yes, if you want to learn it faster, you must practice. You must make more sentences. And practice make man perfect. Just already and yet. These are three words that you must uh, keep in mind. These words are very commonly used with this tense. We can use the present perfect tense with, for example, just, already, and yet in different situations. Just means a short time ago. Already means sooner than expected. We, can, we use yet when we are expecting something to happen, just and already come before the verb and yet comes at the end of a question or a negative sentence. I'll give you some examples. We have just come back from our holiday. Look at the placement of just here. I cannot say we just have come back. That may be right um, in some situations, maybe when you want to change the focus of uh, the normal sentence. But here, what is the normal formula? We use just between the auxiliary or the helping verb have or has, and then the main verb that is here uh, in the sentence that is come. 
Look at the sand the snow. We have just come back from our holiday. Second example is, it isn't a very good party. Most people have already gone home. Once again, already has been used between the helping verb, that is have, and the main verb, that is gone, the third form of go. One more example. It is 11 o'clock and you haven't finished breakfast yet. You haven't finished breakfast yet. What is it? Yet is being used at the end of a sentence. Uh, usually, uh, I think I haven't seen uh, any sentence where yet is used in the beginning of a sentence. It usually it is used at the end of a sentence. Has your course started yet? And the answer is, it hasn't started yet. Now, uh, problems that Pakistanis face while using this tense. Number one, they often confuse this tense with past simple tense. Past simple tense is used when we know the definite time of an action. For example, uh, he came here yesterday. I met him two hours ago. Definite time is here. I cannot say, I have met him two hours ago or I have um, done my master's in 2002, like this. That is wrong. It means past simple tense is used when we have the definite idea of uh, an action or maybe when time factor is more important than the action or maybe when the time is equally important as mm, the action is. Second problem faced by Pakistanis. They often commit a mistake in the formation of the third form of the verb. For example, many Pakistani believe that it is sit, sat, sit. You know, it is sit, sat, sat. And then people don't know that, don't have any idea of uh, different verbs like dig. They change into maybe digged, dicked, dig, dug, dug. And then you've got the verbs like, let's say, spin. They change to spin, span, and spun, following the pattern of drink, drank, drunk, and sing, sang, sung. Remember, spin is uh, changed into spun and spun. Spin, spun, spun. Similarly, stick, stuck, stuck and swing, swung, swung. It means you have to buy some good book uh, of English that gives you the sense of maybe the list of all the verbs and you must know how to use them because if you know the construction of present perfect tense yet without having any, having any idea of the past form of the verb, your sentence will be wrong. Your speech will be wrong. Although in spoken form, your communication may not break down, but as a matter of fact, what happens? The whole impression is lost. You know, verb is a very important part of speech in all languages. You can make, for example, a sentence with, uh, without an adjective, without a noun, but you cannot make a sentence without a verb. Sometimes the whole sentence is comprised of one single word, and that is a verb. For example, come, sit. But you cannot make, let, let's say, you cannot use a noun like this or adjective like this. In English, the idea of verb is equally important, but slightly more complicated than some other languages. Because in English, verbs fall into two categories uh, regarding our topic, like uh, uh, how they change the form. They are divided into regular verbs and irregular verbs. Regular verbs uh, take D or ED whenever we change them into past form. For example, face, faced, match, matched, name, named. You know, name can be used as a verb. There are many English nouns which can be changed into verb. For example, pen, penned, I can be used as a verb. Anyway, ED is a formula or D is a, usually ED is used at the end of a verb to change to past form. But the problem here is the pronunciation, uh, the spoken side of the language. If uh, you are speaking with somebody and using the words like asked and matched it like this, you will sound ridiculous. Here you have to know the tip which I gave in the beginning. Second verbs are ir irregular verbs which can, for example, uh, which may not change at all in present past, past, distant past, for example, put, 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 hit, 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 cut, cut, cut. Or there might be verbs which might take 
two different forms, three, uh, two different forms in three different times. For example, present, let's say, uh, stick, past, stuck, distant past, stuck, no change. Stick, stuck, stuck, but compare this verb with sing, that changes into sang and sung, and drink, drank, and drunk. You must be very careful in using these verbs in the third form, uh, especially in examination. Because in examination, if you write the whole formula correctly, but if the verb is wrong, you will get zero. For that, you must be very much careful uh, using that verb. I believe you got some idea of uh, this tense now. This tense is different from past perfect tense. It is different from uh, past simple tense. And don't confuse past simple and present perfect tenses. Because if you confuse them, it means you don't have any idea of the time. When time is used, remember we use the past simple tense. And when the time is not used, or maybe when the time is not important at all, we uh, means we are focusing on the, the, the action itself. We use present perfect tense. Once again, formula. I would like to give you the present, uh, the, the positive formula. We use subject, then have or has, depending on the subject. If it is singular, it will be has, or if it is I, you, it will be have. Otherwise, it is has. Uh, with plural, it is always have. And then you've got the third form, and then object if it is necessary. And how to change into negative? Simply add not between the helping verb, that is have or has, and then the main verb. And interrogative, simply bring the helping verb to the beginning and put question mark at the end. The rest is same. Right, uh, dear students, I believe that you learned a lot for, uh, in today's program, and I would like to say goodbye to all of you from the studio, and hope to meet you again with a new topic with the same zeal and zest. Goodbye, and Allah Hafiz.